this is actually where I grew up. Um, that that's that's my grandmother's place. Um, I spent a number of years, more than a decade, living in these streets. Um, however, for me, uh, you know, it, it's not a lot of young people or a lot of black people who make it out of this township and, and, and do well for themselves. But at the same time, there are people such as your Sandy Lazungus. He grew up in this township and right now he's running one of the, the most successful companies in South Africa. And it's one of the people that I used to say, you know what, if he can do it, why can't I? At just 23 years old, Sandile Shezi has become one of South Africa's youngest millionaires. But he admits that he made some very risky decisions. My parents gave me my tuition fees for the year um, to go and pay uh, um, for university. And I actually took the entire amount and I threw it in the forex market. I actually started um, trading through Standard Bank Online, where I was buying and selling stocks. Um, but at that time, I didn't really take it that seriously. After working on a few businesses i realized that you know what if i really put my entire energy into this thing i could actually make it big being a young trader i started networking with other people already in the trading industry that's when I was introduced to what we call currency trading, which is the forex market. Then I moved over. When we started the business, it was very challenging um, and, and difficult. For us as young people, we, we, we never studied business management. We don't come from an economics background or, or, or those kind of things. For us, it was more about, you know what, get a company registered, just get it off the ground, open an office and, and, and you know, just jump in the deep end. And of which when we got started, that's when we realized things are not as easy as they look. You can't just open a laptop and start trading. You gotta understand what you're doing and that's where um, my company comes in that for us it's about grooming people and making them understand that when is the right time to buy, when is the right time to sell and how do you go about avoiding losing your capital. We want to empower everybody about Forex, you know, we, we want to make sure the masses know about trading. I might be holding on and I, have, I, I end up having a repeat of what happened. What happens to the Zim dollar? I hold on, it loses more value. I hold on, it loses more value. Eventually, what I'm holding on to has more value. As a company, we do what we call free beginners classes. So, essentially, anyone and everyone, irrespective of background or education, um, qualification, they can come through for a free beginners class, of which there is no fee for that. They don't even pay for the seats um, when they attend. And essentially, we, we pretty much give them all the basics they need about Forex and what we do as a company. How did Aliko Tangote become the richest guy in Africa? I wanted to know, how did Tony Yenumilu become one of the most respected billionaires in Nigeria? How did Sanyi Lezumu, a black boy from a township in Durban, make so many billions in his lifetime? When you get into entrepreneurship, the first thing in your mind is money. That, you know, I need to make money, I need, I need to feed myself, I need to be able to take care of my expenses. But once you have done that, you start looking at a bigger picture that, you know what, I've got employees to take care of. I've got, I've, got, I've got people to make sure that um, we, we take care of, we've, we've got clients in a number of different cities. So for, for me, it's more, it's more about giving value than just making money at this point. Wow.